I'm Esther Can, and I taught at Wesley International School for almost 20 years. The first time I went was in 98, I believe. Um, or it might have even been before that, actually. But Wesley is one of the best places that I ever taught, and I enjoyed it immensely. The first time I was there, I, we taught at the um, old school, which is now Cotty's Academy, and or part of it. And one of my favorite memories from there was the overnight sleepovers when everybody slept overnight at school, we divided up and slept on the floor in the classrooms. We'd usually help, everybody helped with fixing the meal for supper. Spaghetti was one of the favorite ones. Then after we went to the new campus and I was still teaching fifth, sixth grade, sometimes fourth grade, we used to go on um, overnight camping trips to one of the parks and then take hikes and we'd sleep in tents at night, sit around the campfire, and often roast sweet potatoes or corn or um, just whatever we could find. And those were some of my favorite memories. I also really enjoyed chapel and UN week or spirit week when we would dress up in different costumes and get to know each other's culture. And that was such a wonderful time. It thrills me to um, be able to know and help you celebrate 50 years that Wesley has been around for 50 years and I think of all the students that have come and gone through Wesley and it's really exciting to see how God has used the school and how they've been an influence in the community as well as um, around the world because the students have literally gone around the world and I'd like to just pray for you briefly Heavenly Father I thank you for the privilege of teaching at Wesley I thank you for how you've used the students that have been at Wesley and the good times that we've had there thank you for um, the influence that they have been in the community thank you for their desire to do the best, whether it's uh, helping others, whether it's going on missions trips, or whether it's just studying to learn the most that they can and to do their very best in their studies. Thank you for all the fun times we had as well. And I pray that you would continue to use Wesley School in the future to be a real influence in Malang and in Indonesia. Thank you again, Father, for all you have done and what you're going to do in the days ahead. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. A special message from Deborah Whitting. Hello, I'm Deborah Whittig, and I taught at Wesley from 1980 to 2015. When I arrived to start teaching in August 1980, the school was located in a rented house at Jala Raya Dieng 10, and I lived not far away on Jalan Manga. When I walked to school many times, I hardly had to wait to cross Dieng because the traffic was so light. Malang sure has changed since those days, hasn't it? My first year, I only had two students in fifth grade and two in sixth. I hadn't taught the upper elementary grades before, but I loved it. I loved learning new things and still do. There were only 15 students that year, but gradually more and more students joined us. Although our rented facility enjoyed a large backyard there were numerous trees which limited our playground area, and so sports class consisted of going swimming at various hotels. For a while, the older students dreamed of digging up the backyard and putting in our own swimming pool. Now I hear you have your own swimming pool. I remember having part of the sports day activities out on the grass area that divided Jalan Raya Dieng. It was fun to be part of Wesley in the early days and then seeing it grow and move into two different campuses. Over the years, I got to teach every grade from kindergarten through eighth grade and various subjects in the high school. I loved how God provided the teachers and books we needed, but most of all, the students he sent our way. I'm excited at the prospect of meeting up in heaven with all the people whose lives were transformed by Jesus because of Wesley School. 
It's been exciting and a huge blessing to be part of teaching children about Jesus and His ways, and then hearing how these students have gone on to other countries to shine the light there. I cried tears of joys when I heard how one Taiwanese boy left at the beginning of his first grade year was able to encourage his mother four years later. She wrote that when her mother died, her son told her, Mom, if you knew Jesus, he would help you. In spite of no further Christian contact, he was still trusting Jesus and letting his light shine. My plans were to teach at Wesley for just four years and then go to a school in South Africa. God showed me differently by closing that school, and I stayed on at Wesley until I retired in 2015. I'm so very glad that I could. I loved my time at Wesley and had incredible experiences. Experiences where God provided in absolutely amazing ways. I learned that I can totally trust my great, big, almighty God. Hi, I'm Marilyn Weiss. I was a teacher at Wesley International School for more than 30 years. You may have wondered about the stone that's on the elementary school. No. With the names of Marilyn Weiss and Deborah Wittig, well, that was put there in honor of us because we both taught at Wesley International School for more than 30 years. years. I knew I wanted to be a teacher when I was in third grade because I had such a wonderful, special third grade teacher. I taught in Michigan for eight years before coming to Indonesia. And during that time that I was teaching there, God began uh, speaking to me about maybe being a uh, a teacher of missionary kids, but I told him I couldn't because I wasn't spiritually strong enough. But then when I went back to the hotel after having a meeting where he was speaking very clearly to me, uh, he gave me the verse from 2 Timothy chapter 12 verse 1b. I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. And so I trusted God that if I was committed, he was able. And it was true that that really did happen. Now, uh, I know that I came to Indonesia because it's the best school in the world. But actually, at the time I was preparing to come, I was I suggested Brazil and Indonesia, and I chose Indonesia. And I'm so glad I came to teach at Wesley School because I truly believe it is the best school in the world. My first six weeks in Indonesia were a real adventure. But then, I began to struggle with myself. And I asked God, why am I here? I could be back at the church where I was ministering before coming to Indonesia, carrying on a very good ministry there. Well, God answered me in my heart. He said, because I called you. And because of that call, I stayed at Indonesia for more than 30 years. In 1978, when I arrived in Indonesia, our school was in a small house in Jalan Baluran, near the Ora Orado market. And I taught about 10 kids in a small room, uh, the second, third, and fourth grade. Another teacher taught kindergarten and first grade, and three teachers taught fifth, sixth, and seventh grade. We didn't have any um, high school at that time. Then we got too crowded at that school, so we moved to a much bigger house. We thought, oh, we just got what we need from now on. And it was a much bigger house. And at this one, I had a, a larger room, of course. And the little narrow seated chairs kept falling over in that room. And I wondered why they were falling over. Then I realized, oh, at the other school, there wasn't any room for them to fall over, and now there was plenty of room. In 1980, all of the other teachers left the school, and new teachers came, but I was the only teacher who had been there, so I was asked to be principal, and I, did, I knew I wasn't gifted in that area, but since I was the only teacher who knew anything about the school, I became principal. And I was given that responsibility for many years after that. 
and I am, uh, God did help me in that, and I'm so glad that I was had the experience of teaching at Wesley International School, made many new friends, uh, taught some special people, and I still keep in touch with many of them on Facebook, and I just am praise, praise the Lord for that wonderful experience I had. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Rebecca. Good morning, Mummy. We are going to make Australian meat pies today. The first thing we're going to be doing is cutting up all our onions. Put some butter um, into the pan. We're going to add uh, some pepper and then we are going to add our two kilos of beef mince. Got that much oregano leaf. Same for the ground oregano. And then I put in a smidge of Italian seasoning mix. Really? Cinnamon? Yes. Yeah, we kidding. add a smidge of cloves mm -hmm. and just gonna put in a little. Oh wow, it's not from here. Are you sure this of... is an Aussie recipe? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Next I put in some nutmeg. Yeah. Now Worcestershire sauce. The next thing we want is stock powder and water. The next tomato sauce. We are going to make the gravy. So I have flour here and water, and then I am going to um, blend that up. And now we're going to start making the pastry. So we need uh, plain flour, and then we need salt. Okay, and we need butter. Is this for the dough? This is for making the pastry, yes. And that is a really nice dough. I'll take about a quarter of the dough and start rolling it out. Now we have a very delicious looking meat pie filling, but we have one more thing to go in. 
This may seem like a very odd ingredient, but very Australian. Yes, I put Vegemite in my meat pies. It's very good. <laughs> so I just put maybe a heaped teaspoon. We should just be about finished with the fill. Might have a little taste test, Becca. Try this, see how we go. Mmm. That is okay. perfect. I think so. Hot. Like, yes. Mm, it's so good. Why don't we ask Mr. Hendro if he would like to come over and taste it? Mm. Uh, I wouldn't take it right from the middle. Okay, so it's going to be super hot, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. 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 Oh, my. My. <laughs> okay. Is it good? I will take that as a sign that it's a good feeling. And now we're going to uh, put our egg wash over the pies. They will probably take about half an hour. Open the oven. Oh, looks amazing. It looks very, very hot. Be careful. Does it smell good? No, it smells amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for joining us on our journey of making pies today. <laughs> today we're making sweet crispy cream fried chicken. Really? What's that? Say that. Thank you. I know. I was singing it. We were athletic enough to be a little. Should we get those shots? Losers here. No, but the losers will be in a better. All right. Chose them. You know. Is it good? What? That, that logic that makes works so much the sense. same. My no, brain. Like, yeah, Jonathan, try it. Guys, their eyes. How is it? It's yeah. good. It's good. Well, it's Did you put soy sauce in? Uh -huh. yeah, of course there's soy sauce. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, oh, there's two more people out there. Alright, bye. Oh, Arya, we'll try it. Is it the spice? Come oh, here. Yeah. Oh. Chicken is quick. Quickly, quickly. Yeah. Give her a little bit of Nice cochujang spice. Show her first. Okay. Okay, then give me back the pork. Opinions? Wow. Ooh. Wow. Thank you. Go, 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 I don't well, even know who that is. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is That's how you get system. food critics. Oh, really? We need a review. We need a quick review. Go, 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 go. Mm. Is the spice The lighting is still bad. Oh, chara soyo. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thanks thank for you watching. watching. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You might not see these people. Today, Eva Christine will teach us roti kukus. Yes, it's for snack. It's also known as Indonesian cake. Right, Eva Christine? Yes, right. I'm so excited to learn. Please come and join us!
Just love it. Delicious. Atok per musik nami, baik kamu masuk lagu Sinanggar Tullo, baik musiknya. Sí, sí. 
Here's a special prayer from Deborah Wittig as you watch the slideshow of some of our students and families from this year. Dear Father God, I thank you so much for Wesley and how you have guided and protected the school since the very beginning. It's only because of you that the school still exists. Help them to never give up, never to swerve from the path of doing all for your glory. May they see your light shining on them. May all the staff and students be of the same mind, having the same love. May they not act out of selfish ambition or pride, but in humility count others as more significant than themselves, looking not to their own interests, but to the interests of others. May the mind of Christ reign over all. Philippians 2, 2-5 Father, I ask that the staff and students be strong and courageous and careful to follow and obey all that you have commanded them. May they study your word diligently and hungrily, seeking to know you better. May they delight to learn more about you when troubles and confusion come. May they not be frightened or discouraged, but remember that you, our powerful, sovereign God, are going with them wherever they go. Joshua 1, 7-9 I thank you for the opportunity you gave me to be there and for all the students who know you because they attended this school. I pray that Wesley students would follow Christ wholeheartedly as your servants all their lives. May they grow in the knowledge of your will, dear Father, and walk in a manner worthy of Christ. May they please you in all they do. May the students be ignited by the Spirit to expand Christ's kingdom all over the world. Give them boldness to speak about Jesus and shine your light wherever they go. In the all-powerful name of Jesus, amen. First Peter 4 verse 8 Above all love each other deeply because love covers the multitude of sins. Satu Petrus empat ayat delapan. Tetapi yang terutama kasihlah sungguh-sungguh seorang akan yang lain, sebab kasih menutupi banyak sekali dosa. Siji Petrus papat ayat walu. Sing perlu dewe podo mempengo nggonmu tresno tin tresnan. Awet katresnan kui ngapuro kalupetan. Pido Chenshu si, ba jie di yi duan. Zui jung yu de shi, xie shi de ai. Zui yang xie shi de ai ke yi zui ya xi duo de zui. Apu da du yai si mu yu, so yu. Unang Pedro, kapitulo 4, versikulo 8 Na una sa lahat ay maging maningas kayo sa inyong pag-iibigan Sapagkat ang pag-ibig ay nagtatakip ng karamihang kasalanan Rotong pitor char o tay at pot Potome tomra ak jon o na jon ke mon diye bhalawasha Karon bhalawasha pa ke prakash karana Dhonra baad Sabse shirish diye baad hai ki ek dousre se adhik prem rakho Kyunki prem anek papo ko dhag deta hai Niti das bara
splendor of the king clothed in majesty let all the earth rejoice all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light and darkness tries Trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? And all will see how great, how great is our God.
Hello, Wesley. My name is John Taylor. I pastor International Christian Assembly here in Surabaya. I want to congratulate the students, staff, teachers, the school board, and my friends, Mr. and Mrs. Lucero, on the 50th anniversary of Wesley School. It's an achievement worthy of celebrating, and I want to congratulate you. I have always respected Wesley School's aspiration to prepare students socially, academically, and spiritually that when God calls a missions family to Indonesia, they don't have to sacrifice their children's social life, academics, or their relationship with Jesus. Because Wesley promotes all three. And after 50 years, these are achievements to be acknowledged, honored, celebrated, and continued. It's been a pleasure for my wife, Corey, and I to be a small part of Wesley School. 
Uh, we have seen Wesley grow over the years and watch the continued success of former students, and we still hold in our hearts many of the relationships from our time there, whether it be the staff, teachers, students, or parents. You know, Wesley is a great school. Please don't take it for granted. Corey and I started at Wesley in 2004, the same year that the Luceros came to Wesley. In fact, we shared a house together with the, with the Luceros. My wife and I served as campus pastors and teachers for two years there before moving to Surabaya. Some of our favorite memories are from Wesley. A school backpacking trip to Sumeru, the Halo tournament in the chapel, uh, the rise of Wesley Man, uh, game nights at the Luceros and Taylor's house, the transformational move of God in the hearts of students in chapels and camps. You know, some of my fondest memories as a youth pastor were at Wesley. But I want to share one story from our time there. Over the years, Wesley has won many banners and trophies, both in academics and in sports. Uh, in the trophy cabinet at Wesley, there is a trophy that commemorates the 2006 Wesley girls basketball team. And hanging in the Wesley gym is a banner that celebrates this group and their victory. Now these women have gone on to finish college, they've found careers and started families, but I wanna talk about the story behind that trophy and banner. In the seasons of 2005 and 2006, Mountain View was the basketball powerhouse in our league. They intimidated everybody, they beat everybody in the, 20, the 2005 tournament. They were taller, they had dominant players, they had better offense, better coaching, and on paper they were just a better team than everybody. And at the beginning of 2006 season, this group of Wesley girls determined to work harder than any other team to earn a championship. And they acted on that commitment. They conditioned in practice so they could outrun any other team during a game. They even had a motto, the legs feed the wolf, because the wolf eats based on the endurance and the strength of its legs and its ability to outrun its prey. Those girls determined to be the wolf, to be relentless and never quit. And they even practiced against the Wesley boys for added competition. And over the course of the season, that group of girls developed a smothering defense and a winning record. They had outrun and out-hustled every team they had played leading into the tournament. And when they faced our arch rival early on in that tournament, in that game, Mountain View struggled with our defense, but we couldn't get points on the board. They ended up beating us by eight points. At the team meeting after the game, the girls were devastated, and I had to look into their eyes and challenge them. Girls, right now you've got to decide who you're going to be and how you're going to respond. At the beginning of this season, you determined to pay the price for victory, that you would train harder than anybody else. You have done that, and girls, you can run with Mountain View, but right now, your confidence is shaken, and you can't be intimidated. No matter how hard it gets, you cannot quit. You have to leave everything on that court, and right now, your determination and your commitment to yourselves is being tested. Who are you going to be? They looked each other in the eyes and wiped away some tears. They pulled themselves together and then put together a series of wins in that tournament that led to the championship round against you-know-who. Mountain View came out in that final game confident, and our girls came out fired up and determined. They played their power offense. We played our scrappy, high-pressure defense. It was a tight game. The lead changed hand, uh, you know, back and forth, but nobody pulled ahead by more than a few points. The crowd was into it. Wesley fans were there in mass cheering, beating on aqua gallons. They were loud. Let's go, Wesley, let's go. You know, it was electric. But in the fourth quarter, Mountain View was tired. And this was the moment we had trained for all season. Our conditioning was paying off. Our defense kept Mountain View on the ropes. You know, with about a minute left, Wesley had pulled ahead by a couple of points. And Mountain View's point guard was driving the ball into, you know, about half court into our defense. And suddenly, at the critical moment, 
Haman reached in, swatted the ball. The ball came loose and she came up with a steal. The crowd went nuts. Wesley had the ball effectively ending the game as the clock ran out. Wesley fans stormed the court, screaming, cheering. It was wild. This was the story behind that banner in your gym and that trophy in that cabinet today. This story illustrates some important principles related to life and faith. First, life offers a number of prizes. They may be related to academics or sports, a career, family, perhaps something material like a phone or a car, a business or a home one day. But none of these things are owed to you. You're not entitled to them. The prizes of life are earned no matter what it is that you're shooting for. Sacrifice and run in such a way as to get the prize. Paul, the writer of much of the New Testament, said it like this, 1 Corinthians 9, don't you realize that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize, so run to win. And this applies to both life and faith. Approach life and faith with the determination to win, but also getting the prize requires endurance through adversity. In life, we have to show grit. Grit is a dogged determination to fight through resistance and adversity. Truth be told, we don't like resistance. We don't like adversity. But without it, we may never reach our full potential. Had it not been for losing to Mountain View, Wesley might not have ever become the championship team that it was. It was adversity that drove Wesley to a higher level of success and character. And those, and you know, what are the challenges that are facing you right now? A difficult class, uncertainty, you know, a problem at home, a financial problem, a health problem, a difficult relationship. What are the challenges that Wesley School are facing? Don't let the mountain views of life intimidate you into surrender and then give up. Rather, see your problems as opportunities. James chapter 1 verse 2. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. There will always be challenges in life. James says that these troubles and tests are an opportunity for Jesus' followers to develop endurance, to mature, and to grow. And God uses real-life challenges to develop in us His character, not just our success, but his character. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25, all athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. The 2006 Girls' Championship was a great prize worth celebrating, but there is an eternal prize that is far more valuable, whose glory never fades and it lasts forever. That trophy is won by living your life from now until final breath and surrender to Jesus. Everyone in the room today is in that race, like it or not. All of us have to run that race. Run with Jesus. He is the answer to your questions and the solution to your problems. Make sure you run this life with Jesus because the prize in doing so affects this life and the life to come I want you to think about your relationship with Jesus today. Young and old alike, we all need him. And if you're not a follower of Jesus, I want to challenge you to become one. And if you have questions about how to do that or about faith, be proactive and talk to someone. I know that your campus pastor, Mr. Hargrave, would be willing to talk to you. Take advantage. One last thing. One of the things we did every year at Wesley is celebrate UN Day. We celebrated the variety of nationalities and cultures at Wesley. Everyone put on their traditional costumes. And then us Americans would want to be from somewhere else. Because all we have are like, you know, jeans, boots, and a cowboy hat, which is kind of boring. You know, it's all very fun. But do you realize that often what we see in life is a reflection of the things that have their fulfillment in heaven? God's ultimate plan is to bring the nations together in unity under his reign and his righteousness. 
Do you know that the Bible talks about a future UN day in Revelations chapter 7? It talks about this future day when all of God's people from every nation, tribe, and language are united under his rule. Revelation 7, 9, after this, I saw a vast crowd too great to count from every nation, every tribe, and people, and language standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. They were clothed in white robes and held palm branches in their hands. And they were shouting with a great roar, Salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living beings. And they fell before the throne with their faces to the ground and they worshiped God. They sang, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength belong to our God forever and ever. Amen. As you celebrate UN Day and the diversity we so enjoy, remember that its ultimate fulfillment will only be achieved as the nations surrender to the God who created them for his glory. On this UN Day, let's remember to pray for the nations to come to Jesus. I want to see all of you at that heavenly UN Day in this life run in such a way as to get the prize, that eternal prize. Wesley School, congratulations on 50 years of successful and fruitful ministry. Let me pray for all at Wesley School. Heavenly Father, I thank you for Wesley School, what it stands for, the lives it has changed, and those who have gone out from Wesley to be light in this world. For those who have returned to their own countries and those who have gone into mission work to share Jesus, the light of the world, in other countries. May Wesley School continue to raise up Christian leaders who let their light shine around the world. May some of the students now become your lights as they finish their studies at Wesley. May you work in the hearts of students, helping them to be a support and encouragement to each other, that all may be growing more like Jesus as they interact with each other. May Wesley School be a light in the community around the school. May the actions of the students, teachers, and support staff be actions that glorify God so people in the neighborhood will ask, what's different about these people? How can we know about the way that they live? Help all at Wesley to study, teach, work for God's glory, not to receive the praise of men. May each person at Wesley know Jesus as personal Savior and Lord. I pray for protection for Wesley School that no harm may come to the school, either physically or spiritually. I pray for a good relationship with the government, that teachers may get visas needed to teach at Wesley. I pray for internet and equipment to work well so video classes will not be interrupted. I pray for the leadership and Wesley board to make decisions that are in God's will for the good of the school. I pray for health for all at Wesley and for the COVID virus to decline to nothing in Indonesia and around the world. Finally, I pray that you, God, would continue to bless and use Wesley School for your glory. In the powerful name of Jesus, amen.